as you are aware, the Jamaica Labour Party put out some days ago what they consider to be a list of achievements. Not only did it appear in booklet form, but it also was carried in sections of the media. Since then, members of the Jamaica Labour Party, they have been repeating these so-called achievements by the Jamaica Labour Party. They have repeated it on platforms and they have repeated it in different interviews. The campaign of the People's National Party to convince the people of Jamaica to vote for us to form the next government of Jamaica has been based on telling the people the truth and nothing but the truth. Our campaign has been focused on reminding the people that in the past four years and three months, the country has experimented with a government of the Jamaica Labour Party. And it is an experiment that has not worked. This election, the upcoming elections on the 29th of this month, is essentially about the management of the economy and the issue of who can you trust to provide truthful, honest, stable, high quality governance while expanding economic activity and ensuring the economic growth that will provide jobs and a better quality of life for all our people. The PNP has put forward its manifesto detailing the main plans and programs which we will be implementing as we lead an agenda for progressive change during our next administration. Our manifesto plans build on the solid foundation which the PNP laid in terms of proper macroeconomic management, the expansion of production, and the creation of jobs during our previous years in office. The manifesto builds too on the vast improvements in physical and social infrastructure that we put in place in communities across Jamaica while we were the government. We note that having been criticized by the JLP for our years in office, that party has now seen it opportune to lay claim to many of the things that the PNP accomplished as being achievements of their own. In other instances, they have claimed as achievements, as outlined in their booklet, programs which they have implemented but which are simply not meeting their desired objectives. This is a continuation of the JLP's campaign based on the misrepresentation of facts and the distortion of the truth. Among the claims made by the JLP are the following. The JLP claim that they implemented programs having to do with the alleviation of poverty. What is the fact? More people became poor under the JLP, with poverty rate growing from 9.9%, just under 10%, in 2007, under the PNP, to 17.6% in 2010, 2011, under the present government. Unlike the PNP, which spent more than 42 billion Jamaican dollars, on a national poverty eradication program encompassing some 26 programs across nine ministries. We are not aware of any poverty alleviation program implemented by the Jamaica Labour Party. The PATH program was inherited from the People's National Party. So too, the land titling program also inherited from the People's National Party. We say to the JLP, show us and the country, show the voters the new poverty alleviation programs which you have implemented. What is the next claim of the Jamaica Labour Party? They claim that there has been a full review of the Access to Information Act. But what is the fact? The PNP introduced the Access to Information Act in 2002, in keeping with our commitment to transparency and good governance. 
Here is what the Carter Center said of the act, and I quote, in passing and implementing the Access to Information Act in 2002, Jamaica has established a new and more open form of governance and accomplished what many other countries are still attempting. The act, which provides citizens an enforceable right to official documents held by public authorities, is key to enhancing democracy, ensuring citizens' participation, and building greater trust in government decision-making." End of quote. In addition to the Access to Information Act, the People's National Party government opened up the media landscape through the privatization of government-owned media that gave rise to entities such as TVJ, IRFM, Hot 102, Class FM Sports Radio, and a number of others. What is the other claim by the Jamaica Labour Party? They keep talking about single-digit inflation. What are the facts? While the inflation rate for the fiscal year 2011 to 2012 to date is 4.6 percent, the inflation rate for calendar year 2010 was 11.7 percent moving from a low of 5.8% in 2006. After the JLP took office, inflation rose to 16.8% in 2007, 16.8% in 2008, and 10.2% in 2009. The JLP further claims that through it as government, there has been increased employment in the accommodation sector. But what is the fact? Employment in tourism during the JLP years in office resulted from the <coughs> aggressive investment program spearheaded by the People's National Party to build 7,000 new hotel rooms over 10 years. The Jamaica Labour Party cannot show one large investment in the area of tourism during the period that they have been in office. They cannot point you to a hotel, the magnitude of the hotels built during the reign of the People's National Party. New hotels built under the People's National Party, Ritz Carlton, Sanders White House, Grand Palladium, Baha'i Principe, Palmyra, Rio, one, two, three, and four, Iberia Star. Some 5,500 new rooms were added from the Spanish investment brought in by the PNP government. I dare the Minister of Tourism, who has been saying all kinds of different things, to contradict the figures which we have just put on the table. And I dare the Minister of Tourism, Edmund Bartlett, to point to one large hotel built under his leadership as the Minister of Tourism. The PNP introduced the Tourism Master Plan and started the planning and financing for the proposed Harmony Cove mega resort development. The Jamaica Labour Party also claimed that they built the new Montego Bay Convention Center. This is an unvarnished untruth. Fact, the Convention Center was started by the People's National Party government with financing secured, design, plans and approvals completed, and contracts signed by the former Prime Minister, Portia, Simpson Miller. The Jamaica Labour Party is also claiming among its list of achievements that it built the Falmouth here. That is far from the truth. The Falmouth Pier was conceptualized by the government of the People's National Party. The site, the land purchase, and the investor 
Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, all secured under the leadership of the People's National Party. The JLP further claimed that it redesigned and expanded Washington Boulevard in Kingston. And I'm happy that we have been joined by the former minister. This again is far from the truth. What is the fact? Under the People's National Party government, we redesigned and the expansion started in 2001, all under a People's National Party government. The Jamaica Labour Party is also claiming that the new segments of the North Coast Highway from Montego Bay to Green Pond and Ocherius to Port Antonio, they are claiming in their list of achievements that they have accomplished that. What are the facts? Work on the Montego Bay to Greenside segment of the North Coast Highway started under the PNP government with contract signed and work started between 2005 and 2006. The Ocho Rios to Port Antonio segment started in 2005 under the PNP government. The Jamaica Labour Party is also claiming that it implemented a national energy policy. What is the fact? Work on the national energy policy started under the People's National Party government. The JLP is also claiming Wigton Wind Farm. Another joke. Wigton Wind Farm opened in 2005 under the People's National Party government. And we are stating these things because we want to correct what they are putting out there. For those who don't know, we would wish for them to have the correct information. The Jamaica Labour Party also claimed that it altered billions of dollars in losses of equipment and infrastructure caused by the scrap metal trade. What is the fact? The JLP government shut down the trade, putting scores of people out of work, while the contractor general identified some 97 